I thought I might try something a little different and read a very boring textbook to help you sleep. <laughs> so, here is a little bit of Chemistry, the Central Science, a Broad Perspective, written by Brown, LeMay, Burston, Langford, Sagartis, and Duffy. It's a very thick textbook, so there's a lot of authors. <laughs> <clears throat> Chapter 1. Introduction. Matter, Measurement, and Molecules. Have you ever wondered why ice melts and water evaporates? How a battery generates electricity? Why keeping foods cold slows their spoilage? And how our bodies use food to maintain life? Chemistry supplies answers to these questions and countless others like them. Chemistry is the study of the properties of materials and the changes that materials undergo. As you study, keep in mind that the chemical facts and concepts you are asked to learn are not ends in themselves, but tools to help you understand the world around you more effectively. This first chapter lays a foundation for our studies by providing an overview of what chemistry is about and dealing with some fundamental concepts of matter, scientific measurements, atoms, molecules, and ions. 1.1. The Study of Chemistry The Atomic and Molecular Perspective of Chemistry Chemistry involves studying the properties and behavior of matter. Matter is the physical material of the universe. It is anything that has mass and occupies space. A property is any characteristic that allows us to recognize a particular type of matter and to distinguish it from other types. This book, your body, the clothes you're wearing, and the air you're breathing are all examples of matter. Not all forms of matter are so common or so familiar, but countless experiments have shown that the tremendous variety of matter in our world is due to combinations of only about 100 substances called elements. Chemistry also provides a background to understanding the properties of matter in terms of atoms, the almost infinitesimally small building blocks of matter. Each element is composed of a unique kind of atom. We will see that the properties of matter relate not only to the kinds of atoms it contains, composition, but also to the arrangements of these atoms. Structure Atoms can combine to form molecules in which two or more atoms are joined together in specific shapes. Even apparently minor differences in the composition or structure of molecules can cause profound differences in their properties. Ethanol, also called grain alcohol, is the alcohol in beverages such as beer and wine. Ethylene glycol, on the other hand, is a viscous liquid used as antifreeze in car radiators. Every change in the observable world, from boiling water to the changes that occur as our bodies combat invading viruses, has its basis in the world of atoms and molecules. Thus, as we proceed with our study of chemistry, we will find ourselves thinking in two realms, the macroscopic realm of ordinary sized objects, where macro means large, and the sub-microscopic realm of atoms and molecules. We make our observations in the macroscopic world, in the laboratory, and in our everyday surroundings. In order to understand that world, however, we must visualize how atoms and molecules behave at the sub-microscopic level. Chemistry is the science that seeks to understand the properties and behavior of matter by studying the properties and behavior of atoms and molecules. Why study chemistry? Chemistry, by its very nature, is the central science. 
central to a fundamental understanding of other sciences and technologies. Chemistry provides an important understanding of our world and how it works. It is an extremely practical science that greatly impacts on our daily living. Indeed, chemistry lies near the heart of many matters of public concern. Improvement of healthcare, conservation of natural resources, protection of the environment, and provision of our everyday needs for food, clothing, and shelter. Using chemistry, we have discovered pharmaceutical chemicals that enhance our health and prolong our lives. We have increased food production through the development of fertilizers and pesticides. We have developed plastics and other materials that are used in almost every facet of our lives. Unfortunately, some chemicals also have the potential to harm our health or the environment. It is in our best interests as educated citizens and consumers to understand the profound effects, both positive and negative, that chemicals have on our lives and to strike an informed balance about their use. 1.2. Classifications of Matter Let's begin our study of chemistry by examining some fundamental ways in which matter is classified and described. Two principal ways of classifying matter are according to its physical state, as a gas, liquid, or solid, and according to its composition, as an element, compound, or mixture. States of matter. A sample of matter can be a gas, a liquid, or a solid. These three forms of matter are called the states of matter. The states of matter differ in some of their simple, observable properties. A gas, also known as a vapor, has no fixed volume or shape. Rather, it conforms to the volume and shape of its container. A gas can be compressed to occupy a smaller volume, or it can expand to occupy a larger one. A liquid has a distinct volume, independent of its container, but no specific shape. It assumes the shape of the portion of the container that it occupies. A solid has both a definite shape and a definite volume. Neither liquids nor solids can be compressed to any appreciable extent. The properties of the states can be understood on the molecular level. In a gas, the molecules are far apart and are moving at high speeds, colliding repeatedly with each other and with the walls of the container. In a liquid, the molecules are packed more closely together, but still move rapidly, allowing them to slide over each other. Thus, liquids pour easily. In a solid, the molecules are held tightly together, usually in definite arrangements, so the molecules can wiggle only slightly in their otherwise fixed positions. Pure Substances, Elements, and Compounds Most forms of matter that we encounter, for example, the air we breathe, a gas, petrol for cars, a liquid, and the pavement on which we walk, a solid, are not chemically pure. We can, however, resolve or separate these forms of matter into different pure substances. A pure substance, usually referred to simply as a substance, is matter that has distinct properties and a composition that doesn't vary from sample to sample. Water and ordinary table salt, sodium chloride, the primary components of seawater, are examples of pure substances. All substances are either elements or compounds. Elements cannot be decomposed into simpler substances. They may be atoms or molecules composed of only one kind of atom. Compounds are substances composed of two or more different elements, so they contain two or more kinds of atoms. Water, for example, is a compound composed of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Mixtures are combinations of two or more substances in which each substance retains its own chemical identity 
and which can be separated into the individual pure substances by various means. The observation that the elemental composition of a pure compound is always the same is known as the law of constant composition, or the law of definite proportions. Although this law has been known for 200 years, the general belief persists among some people that a fundamental difference exists between compounds prepared in the laboratory and the corresponding compounds found in nature. However, a pure compound has the same composition and properties regardless of its source. Mixtures Most of the matter we encounter consists of mixtures of different substances. Each substance in a mixture retains its own chemical identity and hence its own properties. Whereas pure substances have fixed compositions, the composition of mixtures can vary. A cup of sweetened coffee, for example, can contain either a little sugar or a lot. The substances making up a mixture, such as sugar and water, are called components of the mixture. Some mixtures do not have the same composition, properties, and appearance throughout. Both rocks and wood, for example, vary in texture and appearance throughout any typical sample. Such mixtures are heterogeneous. Mixtures that are uniform throughout are homogeneous. Air is a homogeneous mixture of the gaseous substances nitrogen, oxygen, and smaller amounts of other substances. The nitrogen in air has all the properties that pure nitrogen does, because both the pure substance and the mixture contain the same nitrogen molecules. Salt, sugar, and many other substances dissolve in water to form homogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures are also called solutions. 1.3. Properties of matter. Every substance has a unique set of properties. The properties of matter can be categorized as physical or chemical. Physical properties can be measured without changing the identity and composition of the substance. These properties include color, odor, density, melting point, boiling point, and hardness. Chemical properties describe the way a substance may change or react to form other substances. A common chemical property is flammability the ability of a substance to burn in the presence of oxygen. Some properties, such as temperature, melting point, and density, do not depend on the amount of the sample being examined. These properties, called intensive properties, are particularly useful in chemistry because many can be used to identify substances. Extensive properties of substances depend on the quantity of the sample, with two examples being mass and volume. Extensive properties relate to the amount of substance present. Physical and chemical changes. As with the properties of a substance, the changes that substances undergo can be classified as either physical or chemical. During physical changes, a substance changes its physical appearance, but not its composition. The evaporation of water is a physical change. When water evaporates, it changes from the liquid state to the gas state, but it is still composed of water molecules. All changes of state, for example, from liquid to gas or liquid to solid, are physical changes. In chemical changes, also called chemical reactions, a substance is transformed into a chemically different substance. When hydrogen burns in air, for example, it undergoes a chemical change because it combines with oxygen to form water. Separation of mixtures Because each component of a mixture retains its own properties, we can separate a mixture into its components by taking advantage of the differences in their properties. For example, a heterogeneous mixture of iron filings and gold filings could be sorted individually by color into iron and gold. A less tedious approach would be to use a magnet to attract the iron filings, leaving the gold ones behind. We could also take advantage of an important chemical difference between these two metals. Many acids dissolve iron, but not gold. 
Thus, if we put our mixture into an appropriate acid, the iron would dissolve and the gold would be left behind. The two could then be separated by filtration. We would have to use other chemical reactions, which we will learn about later, to transform the dissolved iron back into metal. An important method of separating the components of a homogeneous mixture is distillation, a process that depends on the different abilities of substances to form gases. For example, if we boil a solution of salt and water, the water evaporates, forming a gas, and the salt is left behind. The gaseous water can be converted back to a liquid on the walls of a condenser. I think that might be enough for now. But hopefully either you fell asleep, or you feel a lot more knowledgeable about chemistry. <laughs>